Conductor Pro, DMX recording, color channels, and lighting controls. Conductor Pro supports up to 16 ArtNet or DMX universes with the proper hardware. This gives the Pro Commander or media server the full ability to house, playback, and interact with your show lighting systems. In this video, learn how to record DMX streams independently or synced with SMPTE or ArtNet timecode. Record DMX channels from joysticks and external USB slider consoles or MIDI inputs. And discover the unique power of the color channel for programming RGB lighting. It is recommended to view all Conductor Pro layout and recording videos prior to this tutorial, as well as have actual DMX hardware available during your learning experience. I've created an example here that consists of all of these different elements. From here, we've recorded DMX in from a Pro Commander, we've created color channels to adjust the actual color intensity and fades, and we've recorded DMX data through a USB console. Let's take a look at these one at a time. The first is a DMX value that was recorded by a recording group from a USB MIDI device. This DMX data was brought in through the real-time recording, which can be referenced in other videos on real-time recording and animation, and placed in the timeline. Now I'm on site and don't have that particular USB console, so I need to be able to edit this data without actually referring to that original recorded data. As you can see, this particular DMX track is assigned to DMX address 180. If I move over to the properties, I can see that it's labeled back left level. Well, not sure what that means, but I do know that it's uh, beginning on channel 180 and ending on channel 180, and it's a DMX 8-bit value. I've set my default interpretation to a linear. This is probably due to the recording, and the value source is set to self. This will tell me that what I need to know about this channel is right here on the track. So I'm going to go through, I'm going to play my show, I'm going to see what I need to edit. Just like an analog channel, I have the ability to edit these as point or analog data. I can scale the time, I can invert, I can shift, I can change the interpolation, or I can optimize the curve. In this case, I want to go ahead and just optimize the curve because I see some rogue data. So if I hit apply, you'll notice that I've been able to take this down dramatically, and in doing so, I see that I don't need this particular piece of data. So I'm going to go through, smooth this out, make sure that this looks good for that particular channel. One thing I want to cover here is how these levels relate to the actual color. So if I look through here, I can kind of see a pattern where, okay, they group this together. Yes, aha, this is a back lights group and I've got color and I've got level. This is very common within Conductor in that I can set the level with a joystick or council, capture the level from DMX or ArtNet, but I have the ability to manipulate the color without external hardware. This can be a very powerful feature, and if I click on this, you can see, okay, DMX level one, or DMX value 190, that was my intensity, so that's what's controlling the light being on or off. And if I go up here to DMX value 191 through 193, uh, the red value of that fixture is 191, the green value is 192, and the blue value is 193. Rather than deal with those as three separate non-color oriented uh, DMX channels, I can go in and simply adjust this as an RGB or hex value. You'll see that I have sliders here to control those levels. Those can be moved up or down. Uh, I can actually pick the intensity. So if I were to go in and add a green value, it's gonna tween from the original blue all the way up through uh, the existing orange point. Now that's a mistake, so I wanna clear that out. Oops, I made another mistake, another mistake. Okay, let's take it back to where it was. However, what you can see here is that if I scroll out to the entire timeline, I have a good idea that even though uh, the levels are going up and down, so it seems like about at, uh, at 10 minutes into the show, um, yeah, I've got, uh, I've got this data here uh, set up and it's gonna fade out right at about uh, 10 minutes, but my color stays strong throughout the entire show. So that's, that's interesting. Uh, I want to, at about eight minutes, come in here and, uh, and actually change this more to a, a twilight red. Uh, because now our show is taking place in the, the fall months of the year. Um, if I go ahead and do this, now what I've done is I've created a slow fade uh, from that original amber color down to the red, but I'm not actually changing the programming of those levels. This can be really powerful because not a lot of locations will have a DMX console or even a USB MIDI console joystick or external hardware to program those DMX channels. This eliminates a costly light board being left on site when all you have to really do is be able to program the color value itself. Additionally, in Conductor Pro version 2.0.5058 or newer, 
we have the predefined color picker. When we're adding a key point to the timeline, as such, we can pick from any of these predefined values, or if the predefined values need to be for this particular show, you can add anything from the color picker to the list of predefined colors. My favorite color, exotic skeleton sangria, can be added to the list of predefined colors for my show. This is stored as a hex value and can be retrieved and drag and dropped into the timeline as you see here as a color point or color modification. Here we can see a chase from a light blue to a dark blue to a light red to a dark red and so forth back and forth. If I wanted to repeat this on one channel or multiple channels, I could highlight and copy and paste these data points from one color track and repeat them at the point of my cursor onto the same or a different color track. Therefore, if I had a similar repeating color chase, these can be selected and grouped together. Note that I can also pin these groups and even use the range selection to move those in time together. So if I wanted to edit a chase of a police car approaching, but I didn't want to program this over and over again, I can copy and paste, get my routine down of the red blue flashing, and then bring this back up into a pin group. All the same functions would apply of a pin group, such as copy and paste while holding the control, as well as holding down the shift to simply move those. So again, I want to move this down here, and I'm going to hold down control. Within minutes, I copy and pasted using the pin group and standalone copy and paste a complete chase sequence that involves red and blue staggered across multiple fixtures. If I wanted to undo all those, I can go all the way back, Let's see how far we can go back. Let's go back a little further. There we go. So I can undo all of those in one simple step. This is very powerful for creating and replicating chases across similar RGB PAR fixtures, RGB LECOs, anything where a color engine would be identical from one fixture to another. Looking out through these fixtures, I can see a very similar pattern here that you'll notice a lot in projects built in Conductor Pro. That pattern is that the actual intensities are recorded from an external source and are manipulated as a DMX value, whereas the color channels themselves would be stored as color data. This is very helpful for the specific purpose we just looked at, which was replicating and copying and pasting color data. If at any time we had to convert this to a different fixture, or if we had to reference one channel to another, all of the same fixture data that applies to a DMX channel would also apply to color channels. For example, if I wanted the left par to match the right par, I could simply take this and change the value source from self to reference and pick any of the other color channels that I wanted to go in here with. So if I picked, let's see, right par, now this color channel would be referencing another fixture tied to the Pro Commander LX of the wash on the right channel. If I move that back, the data is still there from before. I can change the red value, the green value, and the blue value to a different DMX setting without actually losing that colored data. Additionally, I'm able to convert this to a DMX channel. If I take color channel for left part two and convert to a DMX channel, note that this is now the representation of what that data would look like if it was recorded or programmed as a DMX channel. Unfortunately, once we convert it to a DMX channel, the only way we can get back to it is through Edit Undo. Please note there is not currently a convert to color channel from a DMX set of values. Of course, most of the features that are available elsewhere in Conductor Pro can also be utilized within this workflow. For example, if I type in left par, I can see any of the par cans instantly that are focused on the left-hand side of the stage. Same thing with the right-hand side. These are all the ones on the right-hand side. Hmm, seems like we had more on the right than the left. Additionally, if I type in Lico, I have a single Lico that would be assigned to a Gobo that would also be utilizing a color channel. 
So many of the features, if not all, are available to the color channel that would be available to a standard numeric or DMX track within Conductor. So I'm going to go ahead and fold up all my color tracks here, and I'm going to focus on a traditional uh, moving fixture here. So in this case, <clears throat> this was a moving light that had data that had to come in from a light board. There's still some color data for the actual color on the fixture, and there's a pan and tilt channel, respectively. If I zoom out, this is a relatively simple fixture in that it doesn't move a whole lot. Most of the show, it's in a single position. However, I had to bring this data in from a DMX source. It's raw DMX data with the exception of the color channel. So how do I get this DMX in to my conductor timeline? First thing I want to do is click on the DMX recording tab. Here, you'll notice that I have the ability to search out any of my devices that would be connected, either Ethernet or Artnet. In this list, I'll see that I have an IP connected Pro Commander 2 at the IP address of 10.0.0.101. The record port we're opening is 5554, and again, this is DMX. We're not currently receiving any DMX data due to the nature of this recording. When I press the arm, you can notice down here that I was able to establish the DMX connection on port 5554. In manual mode, I will start the recording at the beginning of the timeline, so this is not truly the timeline we're working in, but rather a stored set of data, and I will stop when that timeline ends. Now, depending on the type of data that I'm bringing in, I do have the ability to also set to Artnet timecode if your lightboard supports Artnet timecode, or passive mode timecode, which means we're bringing this in either through a Pro Commander device or through the conductor server. With a Pro Commander device, we can accurately sync the incoming timecode from the Pro Commander. This is great for external or legacy data capture and bring that in so that the timeline reflects the data capture from the legacy system. This can provide frame level sync of a DMX recording. If I check on the enable monitor, this will show me at the update rate here in seconds what data is coming in from that DMX connection. It would look something like this. When I press the start recording, notice the timecode is rolling. This is local generated timecode from 00 because we do not have an external timecode source in this case. Once I'm done and I hit stop, I can utilize the right click menu on the Pro Commander device and go down to load recording. Load recording will prompt a Windows dialog box that will allow you to load a .dmx rec file, which is the recording either starting at 00 for manual or your offset time if entered, or the ARTNET or SIMD timecode value that was brought in during the recording itself. This data will be placed in the timeline and will be editable like any other DMX or numeric channel. So we looked at color channel, we've looked at the information regarding uh, DMX recording, ARTNET recording, and how to import those back into the timeline. But what if I needed to add some analog data to the timeline that was based on an, on an analog input from either a MIDI console or a USB human interface device or even a mouse? I can do this on site with whatever device I have and relate that back to my actual channel in the timeline. A great example of that would be this mirror. So we've recorded the DMX, we have the legacy data, but at 40 seconds into the show, I need to have a hard pan right. Well, I can't do this with you know offline editing. I don't have a DMX console and the DMX recording isn't giving me the results I want. Let's go ahead and set up a recording group for a joystick to record to a DMX channel, particularly the right mirror pan. First, like any other recording group, we must set up the input device that we want to link to the DMX channel. We'll do this by selecting the joystick. I'm going to go ahead and bring in the X axis, and I'll bring in the Y axis. I'll test this, and with my joystick, I do have access control on both X and Y. Once I have those set up, I'll label them, and I'll call this pan and tilt. I could set a threshold, I could invert, I could do what's needed, but for this, that's all we need. We do recommend saving your recording group, depending on the size and nature of it. Now I'll go under Recording Groups, and I'll call this Pan and Tilt. If I select Logitech Extreme 3D, and Pan, and Record, now I can go over to Right Mirror, drag and drop this here, and do the same for tilt, and do right mirror tilt. 
and actually I dragged the wrong channel, so I'll simply replace that there. Now under view, you'll notice I have the ability to pan and tilt that mirror. Back in the timeline, I'm going to put myself in recording mode and punch in. And you can see there is some live data happening over here, giving me the actual position of the joystick. I'm going to roll timeline. And you can see some data is being laid down for both the right mirror tilt and the right mirror pan. So we'll add this data into the timeline and note that it is relating to DMX data that was recorded previously through the import process and live data that was recorded on site through the use of a USB human interface device, this Logitech 3D joystick. Okay, so I've got enough data, I'm gonna go ahead and punch out. Now, I'll stop my timeline and I'll go ahead and zoom in. And what we notice here is we've got the pan and tilt data that I need to finish the show. It did tween it with the existing data from before, so I can edit this as necessary, deleting points, adding points. Because the joystick started at 50% and I wasn't holding a default value or setting up a default value, I did have some data cleanup to do. However, in this example, we've looked at color channels, DMX and ArtNet recording, input from a human interface device, and the editing of DMX values. This concludes the video on DMX import, color channels, and recording. For more information, please visit faq.wagle.support.